Welcome to 843 TV. I'm your host, Wayne Morris with WHHI TV. And I'm your host, Carrie Smoot Manning from the Village Spa. And today we have a special treat. It's an all Spring Island show again this week. And we are coming to you from the Old Tabby Ruins, which are just such a historical site and so beautiful. We're just so happy to be here. Uh, which brings us to our first guest, it's Dr. Chris Marsh. Chris is the Executive Director of the Spring Island Trust. And he's going to tell us a little bit about the trust and what they do and how they're helping shape Spring Island. And then our second guest, uh, Mr. John McCarter, he is the president of the Spring Island Trust, so he kind of gives us another perspective of why the trust is relevant and how it's important to the community. Yep. And then last but not least, we have Mr. John Strother. He is the broker in charge here on Spring Island, and he's going to highlight um, a couple home sites for us and showcase why you would want to come live on Spring Island. Yeah which I must say is pretty self-explanatory because it be it's an amazing place. <laughs> so make sure that you come right back for more 843 TV. Where communities come to speak. Eight Four Three TV, where Bluffton comes to speak. Where Spring Island comes to speak. Where the town of Hilton Head Island comes to speak. Where Port Royal comes to speak. Eight Four Three TV, where communities come to speak. Welcome to Eight Four Three TV. We're here now with Dr. Chris Marsh. He's the executive director of the Spring Island Trust. Thank you for being with us this morning. It's great to be here. Thanks. So tell everybody what the Spring Island Trust is and why was it created. When the master plan for Spring Island was set up, they wanted to make sure that the natural areas were preserved and taken care of in perpetuity. And in order to do that, they created a nonprofit called the Spring Island Trust that actually owns those lands that are uh, nature preserves at this time, plus the historical sites, such as the one we're at right now. In front of these amazing buildings <laughs> that are how old? These were built around 1800, but there was a house here in 1776, uh, at least when uh, John Cochran was born. So we we know that they've been here a long time. It's very rich in history. So, uh, Chris, what kind of programs does the Spring Island Trust offer? The Spring Island Trust, in addition to being responsible for taking care of the special places on Spring Island, is also responsible for the education programs, particularly those programs that help people appreciate uh, how special Spring Island is. And we have the traditional nature programs. Tony Mills is our education director. Uh, many people may have seen him on TV with Coastal Kingdom. Uh, they do programs, all different kinds, uh, for the members here so that they can appreciate where they live and know why we're trying to take care of it. But we also have some, what I would call non-traditional programs. Carl Olin is our landscape ecologist and horticulturalist. And so we have a native plants project and uh, a lot of people learn by doing. They raise uh, native plants for sale, both to Spring Island members and they have two sales to the public as well. He goes to members' uh, home sites and teaches them about the, what they have there and, and how they can also landscape in a way that's compatible with the philosophy of Spring Island. Wow, that's, that's fantastic. really neat. Isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Nobody that lives here probably is from here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting because people that have been raised uh, in South Carolina, uh, when they come here, they said, you know, I never really looked at nature before. Right. But now that I've gone through these programs, I see everything in a totally new way. And I grew up here and didn't know. Right. Well, in addition to all the nature, the, the trust also oversees the arts programs and the arts collection that we have here at Spring Island. Tell, tell us about the role that, uh, that those programs play for the community. When you talk about moving to a place like Spring Island, people think about the nature. But this is a community of people who want to keep learning and, and are staying very active. And so Betsy Chafin, who was the founder of the Spring Island Trust, had in the original vision that arts would also be important. And started out with a visiting artist program, but through the art workshops, uh, engaged people to learn more about art. Uh, many of the people that take the art programs uh, were, weren't even involved in the arts before they moved here. Uh, but now we have a clay program, a clay group, we have uh, two kilns, we have uh, lectures series, we had one on the, the history of the Civil War, and so there's always something new and different. Our trust talks, which is our seminar series on Thursday nights, 
uh, is a really uh, big hit. And we have speakers from uh, all over the country that will come here with thanks to all the connections that Spring On members have. So it looks like a sleepy island, but it's very active. And for people who want to keep learning more, it's a great place to be. And I can attest is you can't possibly do everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So many things going on. And the other thing that's interesting is people will come here and say, there's nobody here uh, <laughs> because of the way it looks. But then we'll have a trust talk and there'll be 110 people show up that right, night. Right. And uh, so that just shows the, the multi-dimensional aspect of life here on Spring Island. You can have complete seclusion, but there's also lots of social opportunities. And the trust really, I mean, the communities in our area are fantastic, but the trust kind of is so unique, it separates Spring Island from, from a lot of the other communities, it seems like. It does, and uh, Jim Chafe and Jim Light uh, were the ones that uh, had the original vision, but uh, Betsy Chafin, Jim's wife, was a key player in helping create a vision where it would really be a, a dynamic community where people would want to live. And they created the model where the Spring Island Trust is funded in part by a real estate transfer fee. So every time a, a home or a lot is sold, a small percentage is paid by the seller to ensure that the trust has a source of uh, financial income. And so because it was started in 1990, it was really ahead of its time. Very much. Uh, Palmetto Bluff, uh, for example, is another place where the people that worked here helped start Palmetto Bluff. And I've gone to numerous places around the country where people wanted to learn more about Spring Island. So it's a model that's now throughout the country of helping people understand how much you need to do in order to live with nature. A key thing was to teach everybody that you had to, to determine what was special about the place and preserve that first before you even started thinking about where you would put the human right. uh, components of the, of well, the community. Well, speaking of Mr. Chafin, obviously he was the visionary yes. uh, 25 years ago. So in the last 25 years, um, what, what has Spring Island meant not only to this community, but all communities? Uh, when you look at people trying to learn more about it, the fact that academics come here uh, to do surveys and talk. There's an interesting book that was published a couple years ago called A Delicate Balance by University of South Carolina Press by Dr. Angela Halfacre. And that gives a good summary of what it's about. But it sets a standard and a vision that you can live with nature if you attract the right people with the same values and you have the right structure even within the master plan. You can't add this after the fact. It doesn't work. It has to be in every document before uh, even anything is started on the, on the ground. That makes a lot of sense. Well, because this is such an amazing place, quickly tell everyone how the public can come visit Spring Island. Spring Island it is a private, exclusive community, but through the generosity of the Spring Island members, we also have a nonprofit called the Low Country Institute. And the Low Country Institute's mission is to help people in the region make informed decisions. We have a program called Master Naturalist Program that is done in partnership with Clemson Extension. And we host that program here. It's, it always has a waiting list. Um, but in addition, our Native Plants Project, our group there that raised native plants, as I mentioned to you before, uh, does garden tours. And so if there is a garden tour, a uh, group that wants to come do a garden tour, then that's another way that they can also uh, get a sense of what Spring Island is about. Well, it's an amazing, beautiful place. So for more information, visit their website and make sure that you come right back for more 843 TV.